Here's our first example for finding the area between two curves. Here we're going to be finding the area between y equals x squared minus 1 and y equals x plus 1. Now notice that for right now it hasn't given us any interval um, for us to integrate over. So let's kind of see what's up with that. All right, let's plot our functions here. Set up some axes. Okay, and one of these graphs, x squared minus 1, is going to be a parabola with a vertex down here at 0, negative 1. It's like your standard x squared parabola that's been moved down one unit. I'm going to make two boxes be one unit on my graph here. Okay, so our parabola is going to open upwards like so. And let's put a point here. That'd be um, 2, 3, and negative 2, 3, 2, 3. Oh, good. It's just going to fit. Nice. Okay, so fill in our parabola. There we go. And then our second function is the line y equals x plus 1. So there's our intercept of 1 and a slope of 1. Okay. There is our line. Okay, and now that we've drawn the picture, we can actually see why they didn't specify an interval necessarily here, why they didn't have to. Um, is because there is actually an area that is enclosed between those two curves. It's like trapped between them. It's this area right in here, all these parts. Okay. I'm just trying not to color over my axes too much, but there we go. That's the area that we're going to be looking for here. All right. So you can pick your interval here right off the graph if you like. If your graph is done accurately enough, you can see that we're going to be going from A to B, where A is negative 1, and then B over here is 2. But, you know, sometimes we don't always make the best graphs in the world, and those points aren't always super clear. Um, I know for you guys probably as well as myself, and we don't always graph perfectly. So there is another way to find those if your graph isn't like spot on. And um, those are the intersection points of the two functions. So let's make a little note of that. The intersection points are going to give us our limits of integration. Okay, and so to find intersection points in general, remember that's where you set the two functions equal to one another. So this is where x squared minus 1 equals x plus 1. All right, let's move everything to one side of the equation there. x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And then that can be factored for us. x minus 2, x plus 1. And so when we solve um, by setting each one of those factors equal to 0, we're going to get those two points, x equals 2 and x equals negative 1, that are going to make up our limits of integration. So that kind of just confirms what we saw on the graph here. But know that you can always use this intersection point approach as well. That's especially nice when the numbers aren't quite so clean. Like if it was a square root of two or something instead, that would be pretty hard to pick off of the graph. So it's good to know this intersection point approach. All right, so you can see our area formula that we derived in the last video right here. We're gonna integrate from A to B and then you take the top function minus the bottom function and then integrate with respect to x. So 
in this particular graph on the region that we're looking at, that blue shaded area there, the function that is on top or has the greater values that whole time, yt here is the line. So yt is the x plus one function. And then the function on the bottom with the lower values is our parabola. So yb is going to be the x squared minus one. Okay. And so to get our area, we're going to integrate from negative one to positive two and take our top function x plus one minus our bottom function x squared minus one integrate that with respect to x. So there's the integral setup and if we can get to that integral setup the integral after this is not too terrible. So let's simplify that integrand and um, we're going to have negative x squared plus x and then we'll have a one and another plus one there so plus two dx. And so that's going to be antiderivative wise negative one third oops, that's to the third power plus one half x squared plus two x. Then we're going to be evaluating that at two and negative one. So let's plug in our limits. Start with the top limit, remember. We'll have negative one third two cubed plus one half of two squared plus two times two. And then we'll subtract and plug in our lower limit. Negative one third, negative one cubed there plus one half of negative one squared plus two times negative one. Okay, arithmetic time. All right, here um, two cubed is eight, so that's negative eight thirds. And then half of four would be two, so plus two plus four, and then minus that would be positive one third plus one half minus two. Okay. So I'm just finishing out the arithmetic here. Negative eight thirds plus six. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative here. You can do the arithmetic however is most comfortable for you. This looks all right to me. All right, because then I can combine my negative eight thirds minus one third, be negative nine thirds. And then we have a plus six plus two, that'd be plus eight, and then minus a half. So there's negative three plus eight minus a half. And that would be five minus one half. So that's four and a half, which is nine halves. Nine halves minus one half equals nine halves. All right, and so that's the area, the total area enclosed between those two curves. Now, um, one thing to note here is that this nine halves here is not actually net area its total area between those two curves. So if something is below the x-axis here, um, it's not actually counting as negative. Um, this is like area as if you were measuring a floor in a living room, something like that. Um, it's all going to count as positive area when we're doing this type of problem. Okay. That's because we're subtracting the upper function minus the lower function every single time. So we're always going to be getting a positive value and then 
extending that and integrating over different x values. So um, yeah, this is not net area, it's just like actual area in the old way that you were used to it. All right, so yeah, there is our first example.